Good morning. I am here to do the announcements and they are as follows. As follows. Youth choir rehearsal is every first and second Saturday of the month at 11 a.m. Every Saturday at 12 is the adult choir rehearsal. Noonday Bible study on Wednesdays, every Wednesday of the month. The new discipleship class is in full effect. It meets at 10 a.m. every Sunday. If you have any questions, reach out to Sister Liana Sims. Calling all friends of Sunnyside, we need your help with the food program. We want more volunteers to help support this important ministry. We need volunteers on the third Friday at noon to help bag the food and volunteers for the third Saturday to pass out the food. Every Sunday starting today, baptism class started at 10 a.m. and baptism Sunday will be September 24th. And one more announcement from Minister Milton. Amen, good morning y'all. So I'm gonna announce it right now for Thursday, Thursday's Bible study. We will begin that again on this Thursday. It will be both in person and virtual. Okay, we're gonna start at 6.30, which will be refreshments and coming in and everyone getting settled. We'll be in the McReynolds room and at seven o'clock we will start it. We're going to give out this, uh, these documents right here, this book called Christian Basics. And this is what Thursday Thursdays is going to be basically going over. What are the basic principles of what it is we believe as Christians, amen? So please join us starting this Thursday at 6.30 for refreshments and at seven o'clock start time for Thursday Thursdays. And now that I am talking, can we all just stand up real quick? Amen. Can we all just think about it being September, and I like to break the year up into quarters. You know, I'm y'all know I'm a coach, so I go by different quarters. And right now, halftime is over, and and we are at a time spiritually, and at a time when it comes to the kingdom of God, where we have to get back on the field, and we got to start playing again. See, we had a really good first quarter, we had a really good first half, and y'all who know sports understand this analogy. And and halftime was like the summertime. Halftime is where you take a break, you get a little tired. But I'm here to tell you it's open and kickoff for quarter number three. It's open and kickoff for the move of God. And if you don't come out of the locker room with your mind right, if you don't come out of the locker room ready to lock back in, you got to understand your opponent, which is the devil, he is ready to fight and he is ready to go win the game. So I'm asking us right now, Sunnyside, that we come together and we open our mouth and we give God some praise today. We remember what he's done for us and let us not get too lax. Let us understand that we are still in a fight, and these are some tur turbulent times. But I'm reminded of a hymn my grandma used to sing. She would say, in times like this, on, yeah. we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. It say be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the side, the solid rock. Do anybody know who that solid rock is? This rock is Jesus. He is the one, this rock is Jesus, he is the one, so be very sure, this, this takes a reflection and some gut check to be very sure, make sure what you're doing is not that of the enemy. But that's your anchor, your anchor holds and grips the side, the solid rock. Y'all, can we recite our call to worship as we come in this place today to give God his praise and his glory. And the call to worship reads, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within that gate, O Jerusalem. For a day in that court is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God 
than to deal in the twins of wickedness. Amen. 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 So it is praise and worship time. Amen. 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 The Bible says we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. To be thankful Amen. unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, yeah. and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. And it is first Sunday, first Sunday in September. Amen. All the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. of his blood that we have 
have the right to eternal life, amen, that we have the privilege to go boldly to the throne for ourselves, that he reconciled us to God the Father, amen. There's nothing like in the blood, the shed blood of Jesus, amen, amen. And we want to recognize and honor and reverence that, amen, amen. That's why we do communion, right? The Bible says as oft as we do it. We do it every first Sunday, but I think the Catholics do it every time you go into their... <laughs> so it's as oft as you do it. It's a remembrance of the sacrifice that Jesus made to afford us this right and this privilege. Amen. 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 And we should be grateful. Amen.
cause me to heart check today so that goodness and gratefulness that can flow from my heart today. Come on, let's say that one more time. Say, flowing from my heart. Flowing from Ask yourself a question today. What's flowing out of your heart? What temperament are you giving today? For me today is gratefulness. It's being happy. It's being glad that God sent his son Jesus to die for my sins. Let's say that one more time. Say, flowing from my heart. Flowing from. You ought to at least wave your hand if you're grateful for something that God has done for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. My name is Deacon Glover. I have the honor to read the Word of God today. And the Word of God comes from the book of Psalms, Psalms 23. And I will be reading the New King James Version. And it reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And may God bless the hearers, readers, doers, preachers, and teachers of his word, and let the church say, Amen. 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 to that time of the day where we give thanks to the Lord that we can take time and close our eyes and bow our heads and put our minds on him right now Heavenly Father we thank you for waking us up this morning Lord Heavenly Father we, we, we thank you for just blessing us to have every part of our limbs working at this time from our eyes to our, to our feet to our hands that we Sometimes we take for granted that we realize that's precious. Every part of our body that you put on us is meant for a reason, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just taking time and just, just, just praying over us, Lord, and having your heavenly angels come down and tap us on the shoulders or, or shake us, whatever it takes to get us up this morning to come in and praise you this morning, Lord. Heavenly Father, we, we ask you now to take time to Pray for our people that's not here this morning, Lord. Our sick and shut in. To my brother Willie Phillips, to uh, Sister Deborah Lloyd, uh, Mayfelt, uh, everybody, Lord. And, 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 and for our family members that lost loved ones, to comfort them and, and have us stand by them and, and just encourage them and keep them straight and, 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 and focused and, and, and just work with them, Lord, and take care of them, Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask you, just, uh, we ask you, Lord, to take care of us as we leave out of here. As, as times have got, got real tragic with the hit and runs, Lord, we, we ask you to take time to pay for the family that lost their three uh, family members right here on Century in Vermont. And that's real close to us, Lord. As they were just trying to go home, Lord, and we had somebody with lead feet just speeding and, and, and take them out. And there's no need for that, Lord. We just ask you to protect us and, and, and just watch over us, Lord. Heavenly Father, we, we, we ask you that any, any problems that we have, Lord, we take time, we put it on your shoulders, Lord. You said you would take care of us, Lord, and, and we, we ask you, the Lord, to do it for us. So any family that we have problems, that we have issues with, and, and, and 
things that's going on with us. May it be from our health, may it be from issues at home, may it be anything that attacks us, Lord. We ask you to just pray over us, Lord, and just, just have your heavenly, heavenly blood just flow right on top of us, Lord, and protect us at all times. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. So our next song is, um, I Love the Lord. He Heard My Cry. We just listened to Deacon Will pray, and he made reference to those that are yet grieving and mourning the loss of a loved one. He made mention of the lives that were lost just um, a couple of weeks ago at Century in Vermont. So there is so much, so much going on. But there is so much more that we have to be grateful for. Amen. Amen. We have to know that our God is a good God, a yeah. great God who yeah. sits high, who looks low, and is attentive to our needs. So when we go to him, we cry out to him. He hears us. He sees us. And he loves us.
Good morning, church. Good morning, Sean. It is now time for tithes and offering. Please stand and join me. I'm reading the offertory scripture since it's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 to 8. Ready? Begin. Remember, Remember this. Whoever, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each, Each man should give what he is tied in his heart to give. give. Not, not reluctantly, but under, under compulsion, compulsion, for God, God loves a cheerful giver, and God, God is able to make all grace abound, abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, you will abound in every good work. Would everyone please remain standing, face the wall, follow the instructions of the ushers. pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. Bless those who had to give and those who had not to give. We pray that you'll bless this offering and use it for the building of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Amen.
presence, that secret place that we come and we let you know our brokenness. Lord, I come now because the enemy has come and we need your power to rebuke him, to smash him like a dog. Let the Holy Ghost through the blood of Jesus Show itself out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, court, Lord, I pray right now for Brother Willie Phillips, who's in ICU. I pray for right now our homeless program. Lord, I pray right now for this church that we somehow realize that we are saints of God and we have a responsibility to let somebody know that you're real, that you're real in our lives and that there's no problem, no situation too much for you. So Lord, take now the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart and let it be acceptable in your sight so that your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Today, I want to start a series that we're doing on the 23rd Psalms. So each Sunday in this month, we will take verses from the, those Psalms. And I thought about what it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Some versions say, I 
have everything I need. Some versions say, I shall not want. But I thought about, what does that say to you? See, David was a shepherd. And David was speaking out of his heart because he knew a shepherd's heart. What's in your heart? If I were to ask you right now, Brother Norris, the Lord is your what? Hold on, hold on. If we're going from the, the idea of David being a shepherd boy, I would say that the Lord is my coach, that he, um, he guides me, he corrects me, he gives me strategy, he, um, he teaches me. And uh, yeah, so the Lord is my coach. I have all that I need. Amen. 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 What about somebody else? If you were going to say the Lord is. The Lord is my guide. Because I don't know where I'm going and all I'm doing is following the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's very churchy. Okay, now the thing about a shepherd, let me go into a shepherd for a minute. A shepherd basically is there for three reasons. One, to provide, two, to protect, and three, to guide. But when I was thinking about this, I thought about my own life. And what I would say. And many of you know I've been in television for a long time. And I would say the Lord is my executive producer. And that may sound stupid to you, but you don't know what an executive, you watch a lot of TV. Who watched TV in here? If it wasn't for an executive producer, there would be no TV. There would be no movies. It's the first name there because it's that person responsible for giving that movie everything it needs. And I want to show you a video right now because it really led me to speak on this this morning. Can we see that video right now? Some people came here to the church and did a video and we didn't know what they were doing. This is what ended up. No matter how dark the night, the day is sure to come. My life before photography was kind of chaotic. It was, it was kind of lost. I feel like for a while I was kind of looking for something to be passionate about. There was a part of me that didn't know what my purpose was, why I was put here. Without purpose, people are dead. If you haven't found a reason to die, you haven't found a reason to live. When I first picked up a camera, it was just all about the best possible photo. It turned every single experience, every single day, into this beautiful game. How can I show other people how beautiful the world is? Photography was the first time that I felt like I was in control of my life. This is the first time I've actually found something I really love. There's not one single way to be. That's what makes it so special. It's art. And now for me, I've come to realize that it's not just about making the best image. It's more than the camera, it's what you see. And you need to be able to see people, and most of all, to see yourself. For me, I feel like the reason why we're here is to enjoy these things that we love. After all the best photographs have been taken, all that's left is the experience. All that's left is your family, 
your friends, and the memories. The thing that got me about that, this video is that when they came here with the two trucks and they got all this equipment everywhere and I see what are these people doing? I had no clue or understanding what they wanted from us because I knew what they were doing wasn't going to be a movie. But I had to trust the executive producer. I had to realize that he had the script. Now, let me go to the gospel. You got to trust our executive director, God himself. You got to understand that you don't know everything, that you live, you move in his being, that he has a plan for your life. He has a script for your life, that in him we live, we move, we have our being, and some of us try to control God and write our own script, and that's when you get in trouble. You think you know everything. But I want to tell you this, that God's got your number, that God has a plan for your life. And he says, I have a plan, a plan for your life, and it's a good plan. It's a plan with purpose. Now, one of the things that I liked about what they did was we thought when they came, it was all about us. Was that about us? That we got out of ourselves when we saw this and we saw that we were part of a global plan. This video is going worldwide. And why do I say that? You are part of a worldwide plan. You are part of a God who in the beginning said for God. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have every life. And I don't believe we all believe that. I don't really believe because if we believed it, we would act better, we would do better, we would try better. We're living so much in our own self that we've forgotten the one who's in control. We forgot if I ask you what script God has for your life, what would you say? You see, you would have to know the producer to know that. See, there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Producer is Jesus. You'd have to have a relationship with Jesus. You'd have to know because you let him into your life. And when he comes into your life, something happens. In Proverbs it says, 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. When's the last time you asked God what to do? How to do it? Which way to go? Lord, is this job for me? Lord, is this man for me? Lord, is this woman for me? Lord, am I in the right place? When's the last time you spent time? And it was just you and God. And you know it was only you and God. In that secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty, those are big words, but all I'm talking about is when sometimes you got to go in the bathroom and shut the door, and I guess I'm the only one that know about that. You got to go in there and shut the Lord and let the Lord know about your problems. 
Let, you, let the Lord know that, Lord, this thing is too big for me. Lord, I can't do this by myself. I remember a preacher. He, he went to the lady, and the lady had so many problems, physical problems, mental problems, financial problems, and all this. And, 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 and she asked the preacher, what shall I do? And the preacher said he didn't have a clue. And he told her this. You must tell Jesus. You must tell Jesus. You See, because Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is a good shepherd and he, he knows his children. He, he hears their voice and they hear his voice. When's the last time you heard his voice and you knew it was him and you knew he was walking with you and talking with you? You knew he was your Lord and your Savior no matter what problem you had. And, and, and situations in life can be like that. I know here recently there's a house up the street that some gang members thought that they would take over. And one of the people in the family came and got me. And I went down and I had to remember the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> and as I was going up those stairs, I had to remember that, yea, though I walk, through the valley of the shadow of death. I didn't know what was going to be at the top of the stairs. But I remember my shepherd. And thank God when I got to the, power, the, 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 the top of the stairs and opened the door and started going from room to room, clearing it out, I knew the boys. Why? Because they had come to what we call back then fast camp, image village. And because we had opened the doors of the church, allowed me to deal with them, you don't know what you're doing. You got to follow the script. And God's got a script, and you're not the leader of that script. God has a way, a truth, and a life that you don't know about. You got to trust him. And those same boys were key in our, come, our summer camp this year. They got paid as junior counselors. Those same boys. Okay? Now, I'm talking about church now. I'm not talking about coming here, acting holy with your seat that you come to every Sunday, that you get mad when somebody sit in it. I'm not talking about how many times you check a box because you came in the door. I'm not talking about how much tithes you give and all of that, and you ain't giving much. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about a relationship with a God who walks with you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and especially Saturday night. You see, but you can't do that on your own. So he loves it so much that he said in that 14th chapter of John, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe in me also. For in my Father's house, there are many mansions. And I'm not lying to you. For if I go, I'll come back. He said also, I, but I won't leave you comfortless. I will send a director for you. Did you hear me? You got an executive producer, God. You got a producer who got things done on the cross. You get saved because of what he did and produced on the cross. That blood that the choir sung about, it washes you clean. And, 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 and let me tell you this, there is nothing Nothing that that blood can't cleanse. Have you ever sinned and you felt real dirty? I guess I'm the only one. But let me tell you, sometimes you sin and you feel dirty and you say, Lord, if you forgive me of this sin, I'll never do it again. And you go right back and you find yourself feeling like a filthy dog. Even Paul. 7th chapter of Romans, wrote most of the New Testament, says that when I want to do good, evil is always present. 
And the thing that I think and that I'm trying to do, I can't do. But then when he got to that eighth chapter, he said, oh, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ the Lord. You want some victory? Get that name Jesus in your life. Let him come in and wash your sins away. Let him walk with you and talk with you and tell you how important you are, that you are a vessel made specifically for a purpose. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are a creature of God's handiwork. Oh, I don't care what you think about yourself. God said you my child and there's nobody like you. There's nobody like your beautiful self. You are marvelous. You are precious. Your nose may be crooked, your lips may be big. Your hair may not be what you want it to be, but you are a child of God. Made in his own image. Am I lying? Some saint ought to help me here. Am I lying? He said that we're all made in the very image of God. So he says the Holy Spirit will come and it will lead you and direct you. But the most important thing that the Spirit will do is found in, I think it's Ephesians 3, 17 through 21. And it just simply says, I need you to understand how deep, how wide, how high God's love is for you. I need you to know his love and that, that in his love, that for you to truly know his love, you, you, you can't know it. You can't think it. You can't even imagine how deep that love is until you know him. And those of us that know him know that he's real. You know, in that film, I don't know if you read the graphics there was only one set of graphics on there and it said, welcome to the family. That they went around and they shot in everywhere around the world. If Sony knows that there's a family, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we know that we are family of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be? But when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Oh, when he shall appear, we will receive a new body, not made with hands. When he shall appear. Oh, I don't care how holy you think you are. I don't care if you like preachers or not like preachers. I don't care if you, you, you don't like the Bible or not like the Bible. You need to know that God is coming back. And just like they have all those award shows, the Bible says that there will be a throne of judgment. And for some of us, it's going to be an award show. In Revelations, it said that they looked over to the right and saw a group all dressed in white. And the and, and, and prophet asked, the, they asked the elder, Elder, who is that group over there all dressed in white? said those are those who have come through many trials and tribulations. You see, y'all got it all twisted. You think when he said you will be, you will prosper, you think it's about money. But there's nothing like having a heart knowing that you're going to be with God. There's nothing like not worrying about dying because you know you're going to live forever. In heaven, There's nothing like knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. There's nothing like when we all get to heaven. You got to believe this. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all 
get to heaven, we will sing and shout the victory. He didn't say it was going to be easy. Oh, he didn't say we weren't going to have to fight, even with our own minds. He didn't say that the road was going to be yellow brick, and you can just hop down the yellow brick road. But he said, wherever you go, whatever you do, I got your script. And nothing can veer you from that script except you. God has a wonderful plan for your life. And if you stay in his plan, read his Bible, meditate on him. Let him talk to you. Let him get in your nuggets, your little gray cells up there. Let him tell you some things and give you some answers that you don't have. I'm telling you, you will find a friend in Jesus. You will find a family. And unfortunately, some of you may not be in that family. When you accept Christ, the Bible says he stands at the door and knock. And if any person opens that door and let him in, brand new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. When a person becomes a Christian, they become a brand new person on the inside. So if you become a brand new person on the inside, I wonder why in church people are evil. I wonder in church why people are talking about each other. I wonder in church if you become a brand new person on the inside and love fills your life and fills who you are. Why? Oh, I'm starting here because that's where we are. And a lot of us say we are the family of God. We got to love each other and then go out and share that love. So right now, I ask you to stand, everyone. If you do not know Christ, and you'd like him to change your life, and I don't know how many of you have seen the movie uh, George Foreman, but you ought to watch it. He was a mean man. But one day he got on his knees and his whole life changed when he gave his life to Christ. This is real. If there's one now that would want to give their life to Christ, come now, join the family of God. If there's one. And secondly, you know, if you don't have a family, a church family, a Christian family. You born again, you know the Lord, but you need someone, somebody to walk and talk with you. Come now and join this family. Oh, we're not perfect, but Lord knows we're trying to work on it. Amen. Or if you need special prayer, would you come now? You have a situation in your life. And you really need God to touch you. You need special attention today. God loves all of us. He sees all of our lives. You can't hide from him. You can try to fake us out, but you can't fake God out. For those that have come, let us go to the throne of God. Dear Lord, I come to you right now knowing that you're God 
looking over the world you created. But in, even in looking over the world, you see us as individuals. I ask you now to see the hearts of everyone at this altar right now. Know their need, know their situation, and also help them to know that you see them, you see the situation, but you have the power to lift them above anything and everything and everyone. Lord, I ask you now to comfort hearts, pain, trouble, heartache, sickness, death. It surrounds us. So Lord, I ask you now, be with us. Send your power. Send your might. Not our power. Not our will. But let thy will be done, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Go with these, we pray. And help them to have faith. To know that you're going to do what you're going to do. Lord, help them to know that you're going to walk with them and talk with them through every situation. And Lord, because of that, help them to already say thank you in their heart. Already say, Lord, thank you that you're going to do this for me. You're going to work it out. You're going to be God all by yourself. And I'm going to look to you. Because I don't need to be in church for you to work. <laughs> oh, blessed Savior. Thank you for your answers. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for being you. Let all the saints say hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, Lord. Thank you for the victory. Amen. Amen. Return to your seat. we move into a part of our service and if you could take your bulletins out it says the statement of faith this is what we as Christians believe it's funny how many become Christians and they can't even witness to a Jehovah witness about what they believe so this little statement here is what we want or should know. Amen. Can we get it on the screen? If not, let us read it together in the bulletin. It's in your bulletin. Okay. Okay, don't look at the TV. That ain't it. Okay. <laughs> let, let us, okay, let us read together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. That is what we believe. Amen. Amen. On Thursday nights, we're going to learn more about what we believe. Amen. The Bible says on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat at a table with his disciples knowing that he was about to die. And the Bible says that he took bread and he broke it. 
And he said, this is my body I give for you. Because you have sinned. And the wages of sin are death. I will die for you. And do this. When you eat of it. In memory of what I'm doing for you now. It says in the same way he took the cup. And after he had given it to his disciples, he told them, this is my blood that I'm shedding for you. Oh, because I know you're going to sin. But this blood will wash away your sins and make you whole again. Do this in memory of me. And as long as you do it in memory of me, you will never forget the sacrifice that I've made. Now, as the communion trays will be passed, take the bread, take the wine, so we may share it together as family. Go.
take the body. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Minister Norris, will you pray over the body? Father God in heaven, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, down here to be crucified for our sins. And we take this body, we do it in remembrance of him. Amen. It says that he took the bread. After blessing it and giving thanks, he said, take and eat. This is my body shed for you. Let us eat. In the same manner, he took the cup. And after giving thanks and blessed it, he says, this is my blood shed for you. Drink ye all of it, and as you do, remember it was shed for you. Can you pray for them? Oh, great shepherd, we thank you for leading the way and for sacrificing your blood for us, God. We thank you for the remission of our sins, God. We thank you that we're never too far from you, Lord. And we thank you that every time we consume of this, we're reminded of the death of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us drink his family. I want to hear something about the blood of Jesus. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. Said, I know it was the blood for me. Y'all sing it with us, clap your hands. And one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. Said, I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. Said, I know it was the blood. Said, I know it was the blood for me. One day when Amen, amen. Before we dismiss, I'd like to know if there's any visitors in the house, we would like to acknowledge you. Any visitors? Oh, go ahead, Ma. <laughs> We're just gonna take it to them. Since you're not gonna stand up. <laughs> they, they didn't stand, but it's all right. <laughs> just introduce yourself, your name, and who you are? Uh, my name is Anthony Hudson, husband of uh, Jasmine, and um, granddaughter. Uh, now she telling you what to say. Get her the mic. I'm a guest of uh, Eliza. Amen. Amen. When, when we sing in our song, Eliza, when we sing in our song, yeah. We're going to talk. Hi, Go ahead, my name sister. Is Amy. I'm Tora's sister. Oh, shut up. Okay. For those that don't know, Tora is the one that works with our video program, and she's running everything on the TVs and everything right now. So that's her. Big time. She's not going to say nothing. You better you just tell us who you are. Hi, my name is Fodia. All right, glad you came. Oh, okay. Any, any others? One more? Uh, 
I hear some ringing out of y'all. Come on, bring me down there. All right, welcome, welcome. Welcome to all of you, and we pray that you've enjoyed the service. We pray this week, for those of you who want to, to continue growing, we love the Sunday School Let's Grow class at 10 o'clock on Sundays. Now you have Thursdays on learning biblical principles, and again, the book, uh, there's a book with 66 principles that we're gonna go through. Amen, on what you need to know and will help you in your Christian growth. Also keep the family and Willie Phillips in your prayers. He's in ICU, so just pray strongly. And lastly, for the church, uh, we're, September is going to be a real challenging month for us, real challenging month uh, for all kinds of reasons. So you keep us in prayer. Amen? Amen? Am I forgetting any other announcements? Youth, next Saturday, 11 o'clock. Huh? Baptism on, thank you. Baptism on the 24th of this month. Um, but if you want to be baptized, you need to come to a class or you need to have a meeting with me so that we and you understand what it means to be baptized. For one thing, baptism doesn't save you like some people think. You got to know him. You got to know him. And it's just a sign to saying, I know him. And waving your hand in the water. Amen. All right. If there's nothing else, let us stand, please. Lord, we, we don't leave your presence. We leave this place, but not your presence. Help us to walk in your presence, to talk in your presence, to do and follow the script that you have for us in our life, in your presence. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Father. Unto him be glory and honor forever. Let all the saints say together, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Greet your brothers and sisters.